today, we're examining a robot with top tier design. We're going to look inside FTC Team's 2744 World Qualified Design for the Into the Deep Season. We're diving into their unique approach to handling game pieces with an off-center active intake and a compact robot frame. By the end of this video, you'll have fresh ideas to inspire your next robot build. With over a decade of robotics experience and having coached national championship FTC teams, I've seen what works, and this team is on something special. Let's kick it off with a quick interview of this season's challenge, then we'll meet the minds behind this robot. Here's a quick breakdown of the 2024 FTC season's game into the deep. The game is played on a 3x3 meter field with two alliances with two robots on each red and blue alliance respectively. Robots had to go into the center structure to collect plastic rectangular prisms and place them in the respective baskets on the corners of the field for eight points. Or they could bring a sample to a human. This human adds a special clip to the plastic piece and then that allows the robot to hang this piece from the center bar for 10 points. In the last stages of the match, the end game, robots can hang from the bottom rung for 15 points or grab the bottom bar lift themselves up off the ground and then grab the top bar and lift themselves up for 30 points there are more complexities to the game but that's a rough idea now let's see how this robot managed those challenges so going from the bottom up we have a three-stage extension we're now on an 1150 motor with 48 millimeter spools yep we have a geared for a virtual four bar go cool. um that changes our intake in is burn position mm -hmm. we have an active intake running tpu rollers and Did a you roller. 3d print these yourself I'm guessing? yeah yeah cool um these are tpu yeah now uh, we have side flares and then a bottom roller driven by two o-rings now what's your purpose of using a large teeth on some side and smaller kickers on so the if other you look the long teeth are offset at 90 yep. degrees yeah so if we have a sample that's sideways it'll hit one side first which rotates it uh, into the oh. vertical or sorry, okay it. okay so it has to be going in vertically in order for that to fit yeah yeah um, and in this this self-centers them yeah um and then it yep. kicks them back into yep. uh, our door which is uh, yep. just yep. one shut yep you're tracked in mm -hmm. and it transfers off to our claw. Uh, okay. Uh, and after the claw yep. drips shut, it just pulls it right out of the door. Mm -hmm. And then it runs on our counter sprung lift, which is actually yep. just rubber oh, bands yeah. that, uh, yep. that pull the stages together. Now, I noticed here on this door, you've got quite a few where you've taken a drill and marred out. Yeah. Um. So we were having what problems if... with uh, the color sensor on here. Um, yeah. sometimes, uh, you can see if we had yeah. the full door here, yes. um, sometimes it would get stuck up and it wouldn't be able to pull yep. it out of the, um, yeah. this yep. is especially a bigger issue with, the. before this, we had a brush lens sensor on here yep. yeah. that was mounted a bit lower and it was really yeah. running into it. Uh huh. Uh huh. And we, we found that the, the brush lens laser distance was like really bad. Yep. Like the readings were super intermittent, but the rev color distance, um, has been working super well. Yeah. We also have a rev, uh, not rev, brush lens color sensor. Yep. This works way better than their distance sensor. We actually <laughs> use this to automate. You find that having the door on top allows you to clear out some of that, the infrared light that gets cast. For sure, yeah. Make the, it a little the, bit more The door kind of gives it shade. And we also, yep. uh, it has yep. a little box around it yep. uh, that has like uh, flares for light. Yep. And then we also pointed it down into the intake a little bit. So we're not getting as much light. Yep. So you're really think it's funny how you wouldn't think like a few degrees yep. makes that. Big oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just pointing it away from the lights like we're shining in. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, I love this, just those little things that you think about that make a huge difference on it. Cool. And then the coolest part of a robot is yeah. our end effector. Yeah. So we have six degrees of freedom on here. So we have a 3 printed linear rail. Um, okay. Yeah. We didn't Wait, want to run the steel sorry, one. Sorry, the linear rail is this? Yes. Is so there, okay. yeah. most teams run the steel linear rail, which is yes. really heavy and really expensive. Yes. We 3D printed ours and yep. it has essentially zero free play. Yeah, you've got these... Okay, yeah, why so do you decide to use a flanged bearing as your rail on that as opposed to a unflanged bearing? So the flange bearing, the flange, yep, we have a yep. little groove inside yep. of our rail and uh, that keeps it uh, okay. aligned in the yep. rail. And also, yep. we just have a ton of them laying around. <laughs> yep. 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 Um, that's totally fair. And then uh, Use what you got, right? is running a differential. Yep. So when they move in the same direction, it hitches the arm like this. When they move in opposite directions, we have another set of bevel gears that change the motion from a roll yeah. to a pitch. And you're probably wondering why we're doing that, especially when we have a dedicated That's roll servo. exactly yeah. my question. <laughs> so yeah. after our roll servo yep. does this, yep. 
Not once this pitch is up, our yep. goal servo, because it's on the end of the pitch, effect, it, it can effectively rotate on your... Yeah, okay. so we're able to aim the intake and intake while yep. simultaneously storing a specimen. Yeah, okay. So then going back to our transferring stage... Yep. I'm assuming you're using your limelight here for lining yourself up. So okay. when we're transferring a specimen mode, yep. we can grab out of here yep. and then the rail moves forward. Yep. And then if you look at the back of the robot, we have a small ramp here. Yep. We drop out the ramp. Yep. And then immediately can pick up off the wall mm -hmm. and then score with our okay. Yaw. So you're picking a specimen up off the wall at this point and you're yep. dropping out the one that you previously got with the same yep. arm. And then for odometry, you switched away from the dead wheels yep. uh, to the SparkFun okay. optical sensor. Yep. What uh, was your reasoning for doing that? So in the past, we've had problems with the dead wheels binding up. Yep. And also our robot is a little bit tippy, so okay. it would lose contact with the tile. Oh, yep. um, but so with then this, you'd skip. Yeah. You'd end up adding in some extra ticks. So yeah. with this, it yep. can actually read from like a little bit off the ground. So even if it tips up, it's still giving readings. Okay. Pocketed parts like this. Uh, I was going to say that almost basically looks like a tree support that yeah. you just didn't snap off. Okay. Uh, yeah, we run static studies to make sure parts don't break. Yep. For example, this rail was bending in. Yep. Uh, we ran a static study to figure out how much aluminum you need a foot to keep this straight. Okay. Yeah. 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 I was going to say, because that's, uh, that's a really interesting looking organic part. <laughs> Tell me about your scissor lift here. Is this a way you're keeping track of your cable? Yeah. Maybe? So it's just for keeping management. It's not yep. powered at all. Yeah. But it does a great job of keeping this like really thick cable on the Yeah. And we don't even need to snake it for it to work. It kind nice. of naturally snakes like this, if you can see. Yep. Uh, and yep. then, yeah, it just makes it really smooth when going down. Because mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. we, we have some problems with it falling into the robot yes. this way. Yeah, that was going to be one of my guesses. Now, before you crush my fingers, you're using zip ties as your retraction string tensioner. Yeah. Is that not using a spring and you can add in tension as you need it because your nylon is stretching over time? Um, Yeah, so uh, we used to run a spring on everything. Yep. But we found that... Uh, if you run a spring and your extension gets caught on something, yep. the spring will stretch and the yes. spool will continue to unwind and it hops okay. off the spool. Okay. Yeah. So for extension, um, yep. we uh, and we made the the spools purposely very wide so the string doesn't wrap around itself and change diameter. Yep. Um, yep. So that That's eliminated right. the need for it. And the the zip ties are just to account for the string uh, stretched over time. Time. So you can add just yeah because yeah. obviously you, you didn't you didn't cut this one off and it allows you to be able to pull on it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Over time makes perfect sense. And here, is this just a, a quick way of checking tension as opposed to not being from the bottom? Uh, yeah. So, uh, if we just put it like this, we yep. found that it's super easy. You can just change length by like, you can spin the loops, loop it up and yeah, it just to be able to change your tension over time. Yes. Cause yeah. nylon definitely stretches over time. Yeah. percent. What are you most proud of about this robot? Uh, about the robot altogether? Yeah. Um, I would say how many, mechanisms we packed into the, the small space yeah when, when it's all folded you can see yep. there is not a Deep ounce of, of yep. extra room yeah and um most robots that have this amount of degrees of freedom are the full 18 inches yes um yeah so our uh we, we took some inspiration from the team prox minova yeah um so yep. we have the same amount um or pretty much the same amount of actuators as uh -huh. them uh -huh. um uh -huh. but it's so much smaller yes. Yes.